In this video we're going to be looking at how we can add objects to our virtual spaces so we can present our learning. And this is week two of presenting our learning in an engaging and creative way because we want to make things interesting for our audience. And we've broken down our learning objectives. So first of all we're going to get back into CoSpaces by signing in. Then we're going to learn how to build a virtual wall. And in the final video we're going to upload and attach an image to that wall. And we're still looking at how CoSpaces works, the concept of function, and ask yourself loads of questions. How am I going to present my learning? What am I going to present? Here's how to get back in. No codes necessary this week. Type in CoSpaces, click login, and sign in with Google. And in order to be able to do this, you need to make sure that you've signed into Google beforehand. So if you're at Shirton Junior School, make sure you're signed into Velocity. Choose your account that you created the account with last week and you should be able to go straight in and be able to see your class. Push your video and sign in. Let's have a recap on the different navigational controls because to be a good innovative creator you need to be able to navigate well in CoSpaces. So to rotate, to click with one finger, drag with the other, use those two index fingers please. Pan, we're going to click on spacebar, then click with one finger, and you might have to use your thumb for this. You know, backwards, forwards, left or right. Scroll, bunny rabbit ears, and then we've got V to center uh, the object in the middle of the screen, C to return to the home view, and A to attach. Now, if you're at Shirton Junior School, we are going to click on these things in this order. My classes, then the class that you are in. Check this is the right class. If you're not, let me know and I can change that for you. Then you have an assignment that has been allocated to you with your partner that you've chosen. And then we're going to choose an environment. If you are not at Shirton Junior School and your teacher hasn't created an assignment for you, you can still join in. You just click on free play and follow the steps on this slide just here. So let's go through those steps together. Click on your class, click on the assignment which has been set up for you and your pair. And this is an overview of what we're going to be doing. This isn't everything that we're going to do today. This is our final aim and we're going to be adding images today and then next week we'll have text and then we'll extend ourselves a bit more with characters and moving objects. Bottom left hand corner where it says environment, I want you to click on there, click edit and choose an environment. And this is your opportunity to be creative. You can have a presentation space underwater if you like. You could have it on the moon. I think I'm going to choose this which looks like the, the Serengeti at the foot of Kilimanjaro. And first up, I'd like you to practice the uh, navigational skills that we were talking about before. So I've got click and drag, click with one index finger, drag with the other. Now I'm panning, clicking with the space bar, clicking on the tracker pad and dragging with the other. Then I've got bunny rabbit ears, up and down on the tracker pad, and here I'm using the arrow keys. Left, right, up and down. It's really important that we have those skills really well practiced. So, pause the video. Practice those skills, please. This is a uh, recap on what we've just done. Now we're going to add some objects. And we are going to um, click on the bottom left-hand corner. We're going to select building. And we're going to choose a wall. And this is where we are going to attach our image later on. So this is what we're planning to do. Let's go over to CoSpaces and do it together. So bottom left, where we clicked on environment before, and look how you can make that disappear by clicking on it again. Click library, building, and then in here, we're going to choose a wall. And you could have a brick wall or a glass wall. I'm going to choose a, a brick wall. And there's lots of other three-dimensional objects in here if you want to create something yourself. So I'm going to drag this out, and there are different handles to be able to manipulate, edit, and change the form of the objects. First thing you'll notice, if you click on an object, you can move it round. You can also edit them. So we can rotate an object, and if we click on this handle, we can move in the X, Y, Z axes, we can drag to lift up and down, you can scale things, you make them bigger or smaller, and then you can translate, moving left, right, backwards, forwards, up and down. You can also change the material, so the texture and the color. So let's practice um, editing this object. So when you first select an object, you will get these arrows, and you can adjust the size, and you can make things taller, you can make them um, larger, you can make them smaller. And then when you click on these four handles that we spoke about, you can 
um, move things up and down, you can resize them, you can move them back and forth, and you can rotate. When you click on rotate, so you can play around rotating on those three axes, and you'll notice that it moves in jumps. It's 22.5 degrees each time. Now this camera, if you click on it and the light shines out of it, that shows you where your audience is going to start. So let's put our wall in front of that camera so the audience, as soon as they start, is going to see that. And you can see I'm also having a little play around with the letters V and C. So if you click on V, it um, hones in on a certain object and C will zoom out. Now, I'm going to talk to you about contrast and making things stand out. Because when we choose the colour of our wall where we're going to display our learning, we need to think about the contrast. So what do you think? Do you think light stands out better on light? And dark stands out better on dark, or does it work better the other way around? So having dark text on a light background and vice versa. Consider this when you're choosing the colour of your display wall. So if you've got something which was done on a light background, choose a dark wall and vice versa. And I know that my piece of learning, um, which is going to be a collage, and it will be a collage for all of year four, um, will probably stand out better on a light background. So I've chosen this, I've changed the texture. Lots of museums have light coloured walls. For example, the Guggenheim and Bilbao, it's almost all cement. And it means that the artwork that stands out on the wall is um, really visible and really obvious. You've noticed here I've just made another one. So did a shortcut, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V if you're on an Apple. And with a few walls, if you do that a few times, you can start creating your own display building. 